My name is Rochelle Smith, entrepreneur, professional speaker, and author. Last time, I continued the importance of motives, really thinking about location, 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 because if you were happy with where you were working out, you will continue. It will be a huge motivating factor either for you to continue or to give up. So remember, folks, choose wisely when it comes to your fitness um, location and facility. But this time, I actually want to, in the spirit of motives, um, wanted to, to continue this conversation in a slightly different direction, as promised um, on a non-Fitness Friday episode. I promised that I was going to highlight the importance of knowing how to approach people in the gym, but knowing how to approach people in the gym. And I certainly want to give a shout out to the clueless members of my gym who've inspired me over the years here um, in Novi. To, to even do an episode like this, but I just recognize, I mean, there's just certainly, there's just people don't know. And I always want to empower you to be in the know. Um, someone actually told me, you know, Rochelle, you talk about stuff that no one ever says, but this is so important. We can talk about approaching people. And I've had two episodes on a non-fitness Friday, approaching people in general situations, but approaching people in the gym is so important because again, we all want to be accepted. We all, you know, want to, want to feel like we belong. We don't want to be rejected. Uh, but, but in the gym, I mean, there's certainly some idiosyncrasies and some, a lot of unwritten rules, quite frankly. There's some etiquette rules that may be posted on the board. You know, wipe up, wipe off your machines. And I told you in my gym, they've got signs saying, please, you know, the sanitization, please sanitize after use. Unfortunately, many people ignore those signs. But what are you going to do? But again, approaching people in the gym. And there's three points that I want to make on this episode. The first point is consider your timing. When approaching people, consider your timing, consider your ask, point number two. And point number three, consider your content. Okay, so consider your timing. Okay, you really have to think about, you know, when you're approaching someone in the gym, or of course, outside of the gym, consider the timing. Okay, if somebody's busting it and killing it on a cardio machine, unless you know the person and you're an absolute stranger, do not approach them. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is not a good time to approach somebody, particularly again if, if they're killing it, if they're they're sweating, they're doing the best that they can and making things happen. Um, do not interrupt them. You know, consider your timing. That's probably not the best timing. Can you wait till they get off the machine? Can you perhaps you know catch them walking to another machine, another weight machine, another cardio machine? Um, you have to consider your timing, or for, for particularly again if they're on to weight machines or stretching or something like that. Um, a key of always thinking about approaching people is, is, and again, if you've played basketball, particularly at the high school level, college level, professionally, you're going to be attuned to people's body language because approaching people is truly all about body language. I send signals. I send some strong signals um, when I'm in the gym, but we all send signals. And that lets you know when is a good time to approach someone. So you've got to watch people's body language. Do they have a closed, and you will often see me sometimes like this, a closed body language, and I'm communicating, like now is not a good time to approach me. And when I'm on a cardio machine, unless I know you, um, do not, you know, of course it happens with some of the Lifetime Valley members, but their grandfather, it's okay, they're grandfathered in, it's, it's all right. Um, but consider your timing, consider your timing, consider your timing. I've had people where I would literally be, you know, just getting on a, the lat pull down machine and someone will come up, some guy will come up and start talking to me. I mean, that is, I mean, just bad timing. I'm going for my first rep, just got on this machine and somebody's interrupting me um, again. So think about timing and it's, you know, you want to, you know, bring the point up about the golden rule of, you know, approaching people, um, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But in my gym, I mean, that... <laughs> People just don't know. And I think it's just, again, it's a, it's an awareness issue. This is something early on, I think, in people's fitness journeys. Um, you know, the approaching people piece and interrupting people piece is not something that, you know, you can read about or you can watch some YouTube videos on this. That's why it's something I think is so important because if you approach someone, regardless of what your motives for approaching them um, are, um, you're, the, the chances are if the timing's wrong, it's highly likely the person's going to reject you, okay? And you're going to feel bad and your feelings are going to be hurt and whatever, but you have to take responsibility and not just say, well, that person rejected me or that person blew me off. But you've got to ask yourself, how was my timing? Was my timing right? You know, was this person, 
you know, clearly focused and, and just not in a, in a good point in terms of interrupting them. Um, you've got to, in considering timing, you've got to look at people. When people have on headphones, earbuds, that's sending a strong signal, right? I mean, that's huge, but there's a lot of people that don't get that. Again, I've had a multitude of people, just complete strangers, never seen um, these guys before, and will just interrupt me and start talking, you know, um, particularly on weight machines. And I have my earbuds, and that's a signal, okay? That's a signal. If you approach me right, then I'm going to, you know, you're going to get my attention, you're going to have my respect, and I'm going to take my earbuds off. But if you just walk up to me and start talking, and what did I tell you folks? I don't care where you are approaching someone in a store, in the gym, at work, excuse me, use something, some variation of this statement. Excuse me for interrupting you, but I just wanted X, Y, Z. Or you know what, sorry to interrupt you, I'm gonna be real quick, X, Y, Z. Okay, that is huge. Okay, when somebody actually, you know what, somebody actually, a lady, probably had to be in her 50s, um, Saturday, March 4th, I remember that. A lady actually said to me, I was, I was actually resting in between. I was doing jump rope intervals and speed agility ladder intervals um, interchangeably on a Saturday morning. And I was resting in between sets and, and I had a general rule, like don't interrupt me during cardio. And so, but this lady, she was on one of the treadmills um, and she actually came up to me and I was resting in between sets. Again, timing is good. If I'm staring off into space or I'm resting in between sets, that is a good time. I mean, that's, I mean, just anyone. You don't want to catch someone in the middle of doing something. But what did, that, what did that lady say to me? You know what, excuse me, I am so sorry to bother you, but I just wanna find out what music that is that you're listening to. You know, I've watched you, you were on that ladder thing, you're smiling, and you're the whole time, you're just really into it. But what did I do because of the way she approached me? Went okay, no problem. Took my earbuds off and spent literally three or four minutes literally talking to her about my music, the types of music that I listen to when I work out, the importance of music, to motivation and so in history of that gym people have made that comment to me on a number of occasions but she was the first person ever ever in almost five years in June this coming up June for me to take my earbuds out and actually spare three or four minutes in the middle of cardio which I don't like to be interrupted but again you approach somebody the right way the timing is right you know and, and I, I, will, I will say no problem hey I will talk to you okay but you've got to that that comment about sorry to interrupt or sorry to bother you or excuse me, I know, I know you're really focused and start talking, all right? Just make, you know, make those comments and I, that is very disarming. That is very disarming. I don't care who it is, all right? Because we all kind of respect people who respect us and recognize what they're doing in terms of our workout. So consider your timing. Um, last August, I remember it was a Friday morning, um, 6.35 a.m. And so I was running behind. Um, so typically I get to the gym anywhere between 5.30 and 6 or 6.10 or so. So if, I, if it's 6.30, 6.35, 7, 8 o'clock, that means I'm late. Okay, I'm on a later schedule that day. So 6.35, I was running behind that morning. So I'm in the parking lot walking fast <laughs> to, you know, walking and fast into the gym. And this guy stopped me and he looked like he had just gotten out of the pen. Now I'd seen him a couple days prior that week. And literally the day before, he got on the, the exercise, the stationary bike right next to me. So again, I knew. Um, I knew at some point this was coming. And so he approaches me and says, excuse me, can I talk to you? And I said, uh, no. And he said, oh, well, are you in a hurry? And I said, are you, or no, are you in a hurry? Um, are you busy? And I said, you know what? I'm always too, too busy to talk to you and just walked off. Okay, but again, a timing issue. I mean, number one, he looked like he just got out of the pen and hadn't seen a woman in five years. Um, so even apart from all of that, the timing was wrong. If you see somebody walking fast and, and whatever, because again, I love my cardio. My cardio is, I'm, I'm in there thinking about my cardio workout when I'm walking into the gym. So stopping me is just not a good, a good scenario. And the same is true for other people. Second, consider your ask. What are you asking? When you approach somebody, you know, what are you asking for? What's your, again, motives? What's your motive? Okay, are you, are you, you know, just are you trying to make friends? Are you trying to ask somebody out? Do you want to try to get to know someone? You have to consider and know very, be very clear what you're asking for. Because if you approach someone and you're not clear on your purpose for approaching, it's going to come off whack. I mean, there's just no other to borrow from the vernacular. It's going to be whack. And you're, you're going to make a fool of yourself and it's going to be embarrassing because, you know, the, the person's going to look at you like, what, you know, and as I often do, like, you interrupted me for this? So consider your ask. Consider what you're asking for. Okay, I highlighted here on the Non-Fitness Friday here um, about a week or so ago uh, that the young guy, the young guy who approached me, 
Um, again, the timing was wrong because I'm just putting on my, my weight, you know, my, 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 my gloves here, heading to the weight machine. So I'm in a hurry again, trying to swiftly transition from cardio and stretching to the weight machine. So here I am trying to head to the machine and bam, I look up and there he is. Wrong timing. But then again, you know, he stops me and says, you know, can I talk to you for a minute? And I said, no, and just walked off. Okay, but consider that ask. Okay, complete stranger, you know, we're too young, you're a complete stranger, and I have, don't have a clue who you are. This is the first time I've laid eyes on you. So for a complete stranger to try to take, to even ask to take time away from my workout is just not happening. All right, and the same is true for other people. Consider what you're asking for. That's a lot to ask, to interrupt somebody's workout when they don't have a clue who you are. Okay, and there's, you know what I mean? You've got to approach people with caution. So you've got to consider, you know, what you're asking for. Be very, very clear. Um, and third, consider your content. Okay, consider your content. Yes, okay, you may have the right motives, but consider what it is you're, you're trying to say or want to say. Okay, communication is important because, again, more than likely you just have a few seconds to try to communicate a point or maybe even a few minutes. Um, and depending on how, how strong your approach is, you may, you know, get longer time than that. Okay, but consider your content. What are you talking about? What, what's your purpose? You know, how are you going to say it? And I will tell you, bar none, you know, don't, don't use, in terms of content, don't, don't use this, this precious time, someone else's precious time interrupting their workout to just, you know, reinforce stereotypes and, and just talk about meaningless things and just basically waste an interruption. Okay, you've got to think about the content of what you're saying. Something that has happened to me no less than 10 times um, in this particular gym here in Novi, I swear, there must be some type of guidebook somewhere that, that people are reading. Um, but I'm telling you, no less than 10 times. And this is why I say do not reinforce stereotypes. Okay, I, I tend to dance a lot. I'm very animated and energetic everywhere, not just in the gym. And so I've had no less than 10 Caucasian men approach me and comment somehow about dancing. Some to the effect of, um, you know, I would dance with you, but I, you know, I don't have any rhythm. Or, you know, white guys don't have any rhythm. Okay, that's a waste of time. Okay, you're approaching me with, with whack content. Okay, you're interrupting me. That's a waste of time. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't reinforce stereotypes. Don't, don't approach me highlighting your insecurities and inadequacies. All right? Come at me with a position of strength and confidence. You know, whatever. All right? So consider your content. Consider what it is that you're saying. Okay? You know, I've had people approach me and again, like, oh, you know, I used to twirl the baton. Really? I mean, do I have a sign on my, on, my, on my hat that says, come and tell me that you used to twirl the time? Or do I really care? I mean, we, we, you know, I know that sounds harsh, but again, you've got to think about these interruptions are, are precious to people, particularly, again, the people that are very focused, very disciplined, very committed, um, and you all know who they are. The, the positive, again, the bell curve, most people are under the bell, struggling and whatever, but there's always the positive outliers out there in the front. Okay, those are the people you're saying consistently in gyms. Focus, fit, determined, committed, you know, indomitable spirit when it comes to working out. All right, so you've got to know kind of what you're dealing with. And so consider your content. Make your approach worth it and say the right things. Okay, and I'm not trying to sow seeds of fear and kind of insecurity and paranoia into you when it comes to approaching people, but you just got to use common sense. All right, use common sense. All right, I, I hate rejecting people. I hate it with a passion. Okay, I have a sales background. I've been rejected thousands of times in my life, but I've rejected a lot of people in that gym. I mean, quite honestly, I've rejected a lot of people in that gym. And why is that? Because the approach was wrong. Okay, when you see me talking to people, and it's true, you know, just yesterday, um, a, a lady was telling me about her, you know, grandson who's about eight or nine weeks old now. 10 minutes, I had my headphones, I had my earbuds out. So when I'm on weight machines, if I'm using resistance bands off the treadmill, whatever on the track, if I'm standing, you know, whatever, after cardio and stretching, whatever, that's a time. Chat me up. Talk to me. You will notice me. I do the most amount of talking to people, particularly, you know, during when I'm using resistance bands or in the weight machine area. Okay, I don't mind being. That's a great time to interrupt me. So, but you just got to, you know, watch people. You know, like if you're walking into a gym for the first time and, you know, you don't know people and you've got to, you know what I'm saying? You've got to just kind of use common sense when approaching people. Okay. And that's why, again, if, you're, if your motive is getting to know somebody, trying to talk to somebody, get a date, whatever, you've got to, you know what I mean? Don't just walk in and pounce on somebody. This happened to me probably about three years ago in that gym. I get, come into the gym, get on that, get on the life fitness elliptical machine, 15 minutes, get off. I'm at the sanitization station getting towels and this man, bam, pounced on me. Are you married? 
And I'm like, you know, <laughs> that, that's just, that just comes across wrong, folks. Don't do that. It just comes across as pred predatory and just, you know, whatever. Just don't do that. Take your time. Get to know people. Take it slowly. There's a concept in sales, and it's so important when it, when it, it also applies when it comes to approaching people, and that's called continuity. Okay, so in a sales, particularly in a, in a sale where it's not just transactional, uh, meaning I go in one time, it's done. Okay, if there's something that you're going to be seeing the person over and over again, or it's going to be some type of relationship being established, you take things step by step, like that old New Kids on the Block song, step by step. Okay, this time I talked about this, and I want to continue this call, the sales calls, the series of calls further each and every time. I'm just not trying to go in and bam, overwhelm somebody at one time, like the guy did who approached me by saying, can I talk to you for a minute when I'm on my way to the weight machine, when I'm, you're a stranger, I've never seen you before, that's asking for a lot, okay? It's, it's better to ask me for short amounts of time, you know, a few times, and then I'll give you a lot of time, I'll talk to you. Okay, but he was young, he didn't know any better. And plus another thing, when you're approaching people, I'm gonna close with this. Um, and, and this is something, you know, approach people as, as confidently as you possibly can. I mean, again, we all have insecurities, whatever this and that, but, but approach people as confidently as you can. And, and that confidence can be conveyed in terms of, do you walk up and start talking? Or do, like you, do you do like that young guy did and ask for permission? All right, and so you know, asking for permission um, to me because I'm very big on confidence um, that demonstrates to me a lack of confidence. All right, come up to me and start talking, you know, and, and I'll let you know if it's not a good time or I don't want to talk to you or whatever. I'll let you know, but don't walk up and you, you approach somebody and say, you know, can I talk to you for a minute? Okay, you're basically you, you're putting yourself at a conversational disadvantage right off the bat because that person can say no and just walk off. But if you start talking, then they can listen to you. They can, you may say something that's important to them, whatever, all right? So you've got to consider that and, 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 and compatibility. I'm sorry, I, I meant to close on the last point, but I can't close without saying compatibility. Compatibility. If your motive is getting to know somebody, you want to try to hit on somebody, <laughs> consider compatibility. You know, there's an unwritten rule um, in gems. There's actually a few YouTube videos about it that's, that's, that are hilarious. Uh, but it's so true. It's a true point, and it's an unwritten rule in terms of approaching people that are at or pretty much near your same level of fitness. All right. So if you're way out of shape and you need to lose 100 pounds, you trying to hit on the person that's super fit, it, 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 you got to consider the compatibility issue. Okay, age-wise. Okay, there's a big age factor. Okay, you got to consider the creepiness factor. Okay, when somebody when I look up and some guy's approaching me and he's got gray hair, or white hair. Salt and pepper in my guard's immediately going to go up in that situation because, you know, what's the point? In a professional situation, it doesn't matter. But in the gym, that's not appropriate. I, I just, that's just not something I'm, I'm fond of. So you've got to consider the age difference, the, the creepiness factor, the compatibility factor. Okay, but if you, if you pay attention, if you're attuned to people's body language, they will give off signals. You'll be able to tell compatibility. You'll be able to see things. Okay, colleges, you know, you know just different things. Um, that are that are so important when it comes to compatibility. And, and again, in the gym, you don't have the luxury many times of, you know, of working with somebody or in that type of in a social setting where you may have more time to try to gauge that. But that's why in the gym it takes more time. You need more time, and you got to take your time to try to learn and study and, and whatever. Learn about people and watch people. Okay, don't just pounce on people. And again, consider your timing. Consider your ask. Consider your content. And just lastly, overarchingly, depending on if, what your motive is, consider compatibility. Consider it, consider it, consider it, folks. And that's why I said my life's an open book. I, I, I experience these things in my gym, and I want to share them with you to empower you, to help you. All right, so I thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to talking with you next time. Make it a wonderfully great day.